So let's do in this video, let's talk about the application event log and the text log providers. So let's go back over here to the integration services package we had from the previous video here. So we had no logging. We saw there were two basic entries, a starting and an ending entry for our SSIS package. So how about now we go back to logging and we add the Windows event log. Well, now, wait a minute. How come I can't do anything? I can't check that box. I can't change the configuration. Man, stupid thing. Doesn't work. Well, uh, you haven't checked that box. You see, when you check that box, now you can check that box and you can start doing things. The box unchecked means you cannot change anything down here. So check your box. Tell it that you want to log to the event viewer. And you can spread this out a little bit if you need to. Notice there is no configuration here. All right, you know what? I'm not going to change anything. I'm just going to accept the default. Let's say OK. Let's save our package. Let's clear the event log and run our package, so F5. Come back over here, refresh. Oh, okay. Well, not too much. It started. Hey, look, now we get a package start event. And there's actually some information in here. If we flip over to the details tab, you can see a couple of things like the execution ID, the package ID, the start time. Uh, you can see this little plus sign which if we click that, we can get information about the system itself, which computer it ran on, which user ran, executed this particular package. Right. And then we scroll up, flip back over here. We can see a package ending event, which in turn corresponds to the package being finished. Not that helpful, right? Okay, so that was the default, which was really just adding. The only thing that the default did for us was tell us who executed it. That was it. Down here, you notice under the details, we can go under the system. We can still see who executed it. Okay? But we don't get a whole lot of information. We just simply get that a package started. Whereas when we take a look at the package start event, now we can actually see which package that it ran, which particular package ID it was that was executed. Oh, okay, a little better. Let's go back over here to the package and go to logging. Highlight the package. Come over here. I can't go to configuration, but I can go to details. Okay. And notice that all of the events are unchecked. So really, the only thing that was logged was the start and the end of the package. Okay, now if you want to... <sighs> You know, there could be a lot of reasons you want to log. Okay, you want to log errors. So you could say, I want every single error logged. Awesome. Check that box. Okay. Um, you could have informational messages logged. I'm going to show you later on in Chapter 7 how to write your own informational messages inside of SSIS. Um, right before it executes, you know, you see your on pre and on post. Um, on task failed. Every time you have a task fail, it will raise an event. In turn, you can then write that events message out to your log provider. Okay. Uh, whenever a variable's value changes, this one right here is invaluable for doing debugging. You know, you want to know specifically which task causes a variable value to change. That's going to be a great one. We haven't covered the variable values uh, or the variables yet. We're going to do that in Chapter 5, our dynamic DNA, uh, SSIS. Uh, but that's going to be a very, very important one when we get to that point. Um, I would say that most of us that are doing a troubleshooting situation are going to be mostly inter or definitely interested in this diagnostic information. The diagnostic is extremely verbose. It tells us how many CPUs that we're working on. Uh, it tells us, hey, I'm about to connect to this SQL Server. Hey, I just ran this query. Hey, I just closed this particular connection.
so you can actually trace all the various pieces that it's doing. So let's do this uh, since ours doesn't really do anything except for make a SQL connection. Let's just tell it to do a diagnostic one. Save it. We went from four entries with the diagnostic. Coming back over here and hitting F5 to refresh to uh, <laughs> quite a bit <laughs> of entries, right? So it added a whole lot of entries inside of our thing. We still have the package started, and you can still see the event package start. But now the events are going to be diagnostic. So in between here, and really this is going to be the package end event, and then this is the package finished successfully. So in between here and here, it's all diagnostic events for two tasks that didn't do anything. Now, data flow, boy, you're going to see a lot more information. But what we can see, scroll this up a little bit, we can see the maximum concurrent executables, all the diagnostic information. It's about to get a data source information. We're going to use the SQL native client. Um, it was successful. Uh, the request has completed. Right? You're able to trace exactly what's happening. It's just initializing it. It's about to make another request. Now it's going to make an in-process connection. Uh, so there's a lot of diagnostic information from a troubleshooting standpoint that you're really going to be interested in. You know, one other thing that you can do to make this, and I'm on Vista Windows 2008 here, to make this event viewer a little more helpful for you is you can actually create a custom view of the log. So what we could do is we can notice that, hey, the source here is the SQL IS package 100. So that's 10.0 or 10.5 if you're on R2. And so I would then say I want to create a custom view that is of the application log. And maybe I'm interested in errors or warnings. You could put anything that you want uh, in here. And I want to do the by source part instead of just the application. And I want that SQL IS 100. Oh, man, really? See if I can zoom in to show you this. I got to get to it first. Right there. Okay. So you can see I would want to check that box for the SQL IS package 100. And so this way I'm, I'm really able to create a custom view. And I could just say this is um, just for that. And I say OK. And I give it a name SSIS package logs. I say OK. And it's now over here in the custom views, SSIS package logs. And that's the only thing that I can see now. It's just, I don't care how big my event viewer, my application log is, this particular custom view is isolated now to just my package logs. OK? So that's pretty handy. And then you can export that. Uh, so you can export that custom view out so that you could copy that into other computers and use that when you're working with clients. Uh, anyway, so that's the basics of the event log. Let's move now to the text file. This is going to be a fairly quick one. I don't really do too much with it. Um, all I have to do is check the box, but I do have to make a file-based connection now. So I tell it that I need to create the file, uh, C package logs dot, and I'll put a TXT extension on it. You can put whatever you want. Say yes, execute it. Don't worry about uh, the uh, here. Sorry, do I right there? This is what it is. Don't worry about performance of your logging. Um, you know, generally speaking, that is something that a we have to do for legal reasons so who cares what the performance is because we got to do it or b i'm doing it for troubleshooting purposes so i don't care about the performance of it it's not really going to make a, a big deal uh, but you can see our fields the fields really do equate to um, really a comma separated values file 
Um, if you wanted to, you could actually open this with Excel, but you would have to take away this fields descriptor first. You can see here's a field, here's another field, here's another field, and that's this is the event. Here's the diagnostic event, diagnostic event. Right? They're all the same things. So what I've done when I need to work with this, I don't necessarily work, care about the text file as much as I do eliminating the fields saving the file and this isn't still isn't great but I'm gonna to go to Microsoft Excel and I'm gonna I probably have to hack it up a little bit to get here uh, to get it to actually open it so I go to file open and I tell it to open all files and then I go to the C drive and load that file and it says what is it it's delimited uh, because it's delimited by what? A comma. And I know I've gotten it right because you can see it lines those up properly. And so I just say finish. And, and you can set it up properly, but uh, then you just simply want to you know, take a look. Here you go. You can see the different events. And you can remove some of these. Um, you can auto fit your cells. Uh, how do you do that in the GUIs? Let's see. Um, you know, this is one of those ones where I know like a fancy control A, alt O, C, A, that will auto fit the cells, but I don't know how to do it in the GUI. <laughs> um, how do you do that in the GUI? How do you force it to all spread out so I can see them all? I'm sure you guys probably know, and it's just me. Um, auto size? No. Scale? No. Well, I don't know how to do it. I, here, I'll tell you, if you uh, want to look cool when you're working with somebody in Excel and you just want to show them how quickly you can auto do all of this instead of doing this, you know, you could just double click right there and it will do each one. Or you can hit Control A and that selects the whole thing. Okay, so that's like select all. And then let that go. And then the Alt key, O, and um, you can see these little letters right here. Um, when you hit Alt, it's showing you if you wanted the shortcut key, that's what you hit. But where is the Alt O? So like Alt, and let's look for an O, letter O. I don't see the letter O. And I don't think I'm going to get it from this. So anyhow, um, Alt O C A. Okay, so you can actually see it told me this Office 2003. So here we go. Um, Alt O C A. Okay, so I did it. Alt O C. You can see it right here. Okay, and then the letter A. O C A. And the A is the auto fit, the C is the cell, and I can't remember what O is. But it's the old Office 2003 menu, so it works both in 2003, 2000, uh, as well as 2007. Okay. But anyhow, using Excel in this manner just allows me to kind of browse through and quickly define this. And then what I would do, you know, I'd get, I can't help myself, I'd start to get fancy and I'd say, gosh, I... I really want that to have this and have a white. Yeah, boy, it looks so pretty now. And um, you know what? And I'll hit Control A again to select them all. And now I want to do a filter. And I just want to filter um, just the diagnostic events is the only thing I want to see. And you know, <laughs> you know, you can get real fancy. It's one of the cool things about Excel and why everybody plays with it so often, right? So you can do that, and I don't want to save the changes, but that's about as much as I'm going to work with a text file today. So how about we come back in the next video, and let's talk about the XML and the SQL Server side of things.